John Muir once said, The mountains are calling, and I must go. As the summer of 2015 arrived, the Sierra Nevada rang. Normally, I hiked with my friends. We'd been everywhere. This time, however, I decided on a solo attempt of the gorgeous 165-mile Tahoe Rim Trail around Lake Tahoe. I liked hiking alone, even if things could get a little weird. So I shredded to the mountains with an overloaded backpacking backpack of 50 pounds. The trail would take two weeks if I ambled, or ten days if I rushed. 165 miles. Numbers focused. Those numbers would be my downfall. As I set out from Mountain Rose on the northeast side of the lake, I painted on my brain that glorious picture I'd take at the end. Captioned, 165 mile solo hike, average elevation of 8,000 feet, thin air. So I hit the trail and I pushed, and I pushed, and I muscled, and I pounded down the miles day by day. So focused was I on finishing the trek and snapping that glorious finish line picture that I forgot the journey. I rushed through glorious groves of fragrant, butterscotch-smelling Jeffrey pines, stands of towering ponderosa pines, fields full of summer wildflowers. I cruised blindly past twinkling, crystal-clear high alpine lakes, like Lake Marlette and Star Lake. I jumped over gurgling mountain streams. I pushed and pushed and ignored my left knee when it started stabbing me. My knee? My knees were both perfect. Thanks very much. It wasn't fun. The evening of the fourth day, as I descended a tricky slope, 1,000 feet and half a mile, pivoting and turning on loose rocks, worried about finding a camping spot and exhausted from days of trekking, my left knee started whining. I ignored it. I needed to reach the next stream to refill my water. My knee started yelping. I pushed on and reached the stream as twilight fell and mosquitoes rose. Filling my canteen and pitching my tent, I shoved aside concern. The trek was a mental game. It was a physical game, and I would beat both. No, it turns out, I wouldn't. As the sun slinked, slinked over from Nevada on the fifth day, and I roused myself to break camp, my left knee would barely move. No way could I hoist my pack, my way, way too heavy pack, I realized. For five embittered minutes I sank into a fog, I was finished. There was nothing to do but limp through the forest to the nearest road and hitchhike back to my car. Wilderness will smack the unprepared and foolhardy, I learned. The force knew that I only cared for the bragging rights. That won't happen again. This summer, when I go to finish the trail, instead of fantasizing about finish line pictures, I'll be in the wood, in the woods, above the dirt, and under the wheeling stars. Step by step.